Okay. Okay. So I started the recording. My bad. I forgot to record that. Okay. So first of all, can I have a hand? Like, how many of you actually have played with blockchain before? Just curious. One. I know there are more of you. Two. What, what, what do you have again? Like, how many of you have played with blockchains? Like interacting with blockchains, playing with smart contract, that kind of stuff. <laughs> okay, uh, I mean, it's part of the blockchain stuff, right? Investment. Okay, so I saw like maybe like most of you just like hear about like this Web3 and this blockchain stuff. So I just want to make a short introduction actually. Like, okay. I think this workshop is like crowded because of the hype also kind of like Web3 and stuff. But I just want to answer like what is Web3 and what is blockchain in general? So actually the Web3 is not a very... Uh, do you want to sit at the side also? Uh, I think you can take one. Okay, so Web3 actually is not really a new stuff in the sense that when you're in your 90, right, they already have what they call a Web1. Web1 is basically your blogspot. You know, when you are like very, very old and then you play with your blogspot.com and you make your own static with a fancy fancy. Because I remember when I was in high school, they asked me to make an HTML and you have this marquee thing and you're moving. I'm very impressed. So that's what we call my Web1. Why web one? Because you can only read the web. At that point, there's no JavaScript, there's nothing yet. And then we have web two. Web two is basically what you build on top of web one. So basically we have JavaScript, we have CSS, and then we can interact with the website. That's what we call like read only, and then we can write on it. And the last one is actually web three. Web three by right, supposed to be a term for like a specific like intelligent website. What it means, right? People are may, like given a content by AI and stuff. That's the official term of Web3. But somehow, in some way, people become like associating Web3 with blockchain. Basically, since I think the, the, the Bitcoin boom around 2012, at that point, people are starting like say like, oh, Web2 is basically like the companies like Google coming in and then we need Web3. Basically, we need privacy and stuff. Okay, so we need decentralization and we call it Web3. What is Web3 in the sense like it's up to you, but nowadays people keep associating Web3 with blockchains. Basically, anything that is built on a blockchain and anything that is like built on top of it is called the Web3 itself. Basically, something that gives you privacy. So come like I keep explaining what is blockchain, right? But what is blockchain by itself? Blockchain is again not a new stuff. It actually has been like there for like since 1990s. But it become popular because someone called like Satoshi somehow like just like give the implementation. Because blockchain in like 1990, right? It's basically just like a theoretical research paper. Like basically it's part of the like distributed res uh, system research, right? And people can have like multiple computers, how to connect them, how to attack them, so on and so forth, how to achieve consensus. So like one day these people say like, okay, with like uh, some realistic like assumption, we can make this blockchain, we can make this like distributed system to happen and then we make it happen. So blockchain actually conceptually, right? What it is, it's just like an OP database. What I mean like OP database is like, it's a ledger or like, let's say it's a database consisting of your transaction of your data, right? But it's all duplicated in every computer that is running this blockchain and every computer must agree on the state of the database itself and that's what we call by the database is, is distributed it's running in every computer everything agrees on it and that's what we miss by consensus algorithm everything must agree on a certain state and yeah so that's the blockchain itself so blockchain actually there are two layers on it uh wait uh, we have four chairs
Uh, do you have more chairs, please? Okay, okay, yeah, thanks. Uh, okay, just stand up for a while, guys. I'm sorry. Uh, okay, so again, as I said before, blockchain is just a database, right? But database itself, there are multiple layers that you need to handle in a database. First of all, of course, like how do you achieve a consensus between this database? That by itself is a layer. So you see like nowadays, right? We have so many blockchains. So let's say we have that kind of like Bitcoin, Ethereum, Solana, uh, what else? Kathleen, I think just come to SOC Open House and a lot of them. So what is actually like different between each of them, right? Mostly it's about the algorithm. Basically how they achieve a consensus between one blockchain with another is what differentiates one of them. And another thing is your execution layer. It's basically like, uh, how to execute a certain API in the blockchain itself. So let's say you have a database, you have MySQL, you have Postgres. Maybe the engine below it may be different, right? But all of them is running SQL in a sense. You can execute a SQL on top of it, but you don't know what's happening below it. Maybe like the engine is running on Postgres and MySQL might be different. And there are two layers of the blockchain itself. So, and there are like multiple like different developers in the blockchain again, depending on like which layer you are working on, whether you are working on the contract itself, which is on the top layer, which are like other you are developing the blockchain itself, or maybe you are just like interacting with the blockchain. So basically you are never touching the blockchain, modifying the blockchain, but you are interacting it with, let's say the Python or the external environment. Yeah. So there are multiple like types of blockchain environment. And I just want to like do a, let's say shameless plug and like some advertisement. So for you, like for those of you who like come from NUS, right? Actually we have a couple of blockchain modules if you're interested. One of them that I know is actually IS4302. It's about blockchain and distributed ledger. It's basically like the in-depth version of this workshop. You will like learn how to make contract, what is blockchain, but it's not the theoretical side. It's more of practical side. There's like another module called like CS4231. It's the parallel algo. So this is the very, very theoretical side. Like how do you achieve the consensus between the blockchain itself? So let's say I have five blockchains. Like what is the risk of like running, like have a one crash in one of the nodes? How do I achieve the consensus between them? How do I protect the blockchain from being like changed from one another? So there are two modules that I think like quite relevant. I think there's like one more module from electrical engineering, but I never checked that. Yeah. But I think these two modules are very, very helpful. Okay. So by the way, if you guys have any questions, please feel free to interrupt me. And I hope I can answer any of your questions. Okay. So uh, just like some resources that I think are like very useful. So when I started the blockchain and like started learning about blockchain, I think like learning the white paper is one of the most useful resources I can ever get. It's written by Ethereum like around 2013 by Vitalik. So Vitalik is actually the co-founder of Ethereum when he's like very skimpy and very young. He wrote this white paper and it keeps like updated. It gives you like a blockchain overview for layman uh, in layman term. So basically they say like, oh, what is a blockchain? And what is a token? What is NFT? Blah, blah, blah. How do you like interact with them? That's a very layman term. So again, that's the very, like the easy part, but the hard part, like how do you prove the blockchain is working? There is another paper, they call it yellow paper because the paper is yellow, legit. If you open the website, the website background is white. That's why they call it white paper. Yes. So yeah, I think that's all for the, introduction to the blockchain and the web tree. And because this hacker school, I just want to make it a demo. Okay, so first of all, I hope you guys, uh, okay. <laughs> okay, so I hope you guys actually already like have, a, at least you have Python, you have NPM. I hope you guys have at least these two. Because if you guys doesn't have these two, you can't run the project. This is the basic requirement that I need you guys to have. 
please have npm on node and then please have the python at least 3.6 at least the python now at least 3.8 right okay so yeah if you don't have do you want to like uh can i check how many of you actually doesn't have python or npm just raise your hand okay just one two three four do you want to install now i think it's quite fast uh i'll go through some of the theoretical side first then and while I'm doing that, I think some of you can just like go through the installation of the NPM and then the Python itself. Okay. Okay, so. Okay. Okay, so without further ado, so let's start like some of the development. You can try to type along and try to install. I'll go through very, very slowly. Okay, first of all, make your Python like virtual environment. It's just safer. I don't want to like install some dependency and then your dependency is just like screw up. So please do so. And then you do like pip install eth brownie. At least for me, I've already installed it. So please install the eth brownie, this stuff. Okay, so I'll explain first, what is brownie? So if you have played with, uh, let's say JavaScript and you want to make a website, you need a framework, right? It's very rare nowadays people like go make websites of pure HTML, CSS, and jQuery. People now use React, Angular, Vue.js, and stuff like that. So that's the same with blockchain. You are not creating everything from your own, like from scratch, and then you use your command line to like deploy everything. We have our own framework. They call Brownie. Why Brownie? I don't know why. Because like a lot of stuff actually in blockchain is associated with like food. I don't know, in like in 2016, we have like a lot of the crypto stuff and we have like a lot of DeFi, they call it sushi swap and they call it like some, uh, what do they call it? It's like some food swap, uh, I forgot what's the name. And Brownie is just like one of the, again, one of the framework that we use, but this one is in Python. If you want to use it in JavaScript, which is like the more common one since like Web3 is open associated with like web development, right? We have another framework called Truffle like the truffle, like the mushroom truffle. Another thing we have also like called hard hat, but I choose brownie because I know Web3 Pi is the best. Okay. Okay, so first of all, install this. And another thing is, uh, if you already have the NPM, uh, yes, this. Please install the Ganesh, this thing. Yes, please do install the Ganesh. You can use Yarn, you can use NPM, up to you. But okay, so I will explain what is Ganesh. Ganesh is basically just like a blockchain emulator in your local host. So blockchain actually can run in every computer, right? Meaning it can even run in your computer, in your computer, like you are holding one right now. So Ganesh is just like another tool to simulate that blockchain running in your computer. So I can show you like the preview of Ganesh later, but yeah, please install Ganesh because Brownie relies on Ganesh to run the blockchain. Okay. Is everyone okay? Can you give me like thumbs up or something if you're okay? <laughs> oh no. <laughs> Can everyone install the uh, the library? Hmm? 
Oh, share. Uh, how do I share the link to them? Oh, I mean, I can just share it to them. So it's not in the email, is it? Okay, never mind. Okay. Oops. By the way, uh, I put like the website of my Notion page in this hacker.cc slash web tree. I just want it here. Yeah. Then you can see all my write up and stuff. Okay. So that's one thing. So is everyone okay with the installation? Is there some error or something? <laughs> Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yes. This thing. This. Can you install the Ganesh? Uh, oh, okay. That will take some time. Uh, NPM install Ganesh. You find <laughs> Okay. Okay, then, never mind. So I think if you guys have error, uh, I think I'm sorry because I think there's like a lot of like dependency issues. But anyway, how do you check that you already installed it? When you have like Ganesh CLI, right? Then you should be able to run it. So let's say I run the Ganesh CLI, right? So what it actually does, I make my own blockchain in my computer. So they make like 10 accounts with 10 private keys with all the parameter in my uh, own computer. So how do I even know that actually it's working? You can go to the local host, 84845. And yeah, it's 404 not found. Because it's supposed to be just the gateway for the blockchain itself. And actually, yeah, just like by doing this, your blockchain is already running in your computer. Thank you. 
Okay. Okay. So, uh, okay. So let me just carry on first. Uh, okay. So if you have dependency, I think there are multiple hackers here. We just like walk around to help you guys. Okay. So basically, if you have like Ganesh and Brownie, right? Again, I already said they are framework. So if you have Brownie and you can check that by running in your terminal, Brownie, and you play with console. It will give you an interactive thing to your blockchain, which you can use to explore your blockchains. For example, I have an account. So I can set my accounts to uh, account zero. And I can say, uh, what's my address? What's my balance and stuff? And again, as I said before, what is the account, right? Basically, blockchain is a, a database. It can store a user, it can store a contract. What a user is, is just like an agent, like a user in your database. Okay. So if you have brownie.console running already, right, then you can literally like play along with your like blockchain. And there are like some concepts in the blockchain that I think like more than that. Yeah. So yeah so just like to play around right and i want to explain again that blockchain is just a database it can store your contract it can store a user a user has an address basically uh, an id for your user then it can store your contract also basically like the code that you can run in that database itself Yeah, so you can see like a lot of stuff, even like I don't even know what the thing is. Yeah, what is this? Huh? But yeah. Anyway, uh, that's the like the basics of the blockchains. 
Okay, but anyway, if you guys like haven't gone through it, I think you guys can just like listen to me for a while first. Okay, so let's say you already have like a So let's say you make a new folder for your own like workstation, right? For your brownie stuff. So you just make a new folder for your brownie stuff. And what do you do? You just do brownie in it. And yeah. So now you already have all the folders basically for the brownie projects. So basically just make a new folder, go to the that workstation and do brownie in it. Browning in it, what it does is basically just like give you all the folders that you need for the Web3 projects. So basically you have the scripts, your Python or Java scripts, and then you have your test, how to test your contract. Basically your contract itself, your solidity or Piper or Rust or anything else. Yep. If you are unable to make brownie like, because of like some folder, right? You can just like put a dash f. What dash f means? It basically just like forces the brownie to make the folder and like replace the current folder if it exists. Okay. Okay, we need this. This is a public link. You cannot just share this. You share this. Uh, just send this to Telegram. I'll change on the okay. okay. Link. Uh, thanks, man. Okay. Okay, so now uh, this section, right, what we'll be doing, let's say for the next 30 minutes, is basically how to deploy and make a contract in Solidity. And we try to deploy them on the local blockchain itself first. So, okay, so in this thing, right, you already have all the, basically all the folders required for your blockchain projects. So there is test, report, scripts, and so on and so forth. But each of them is actually empty. So again, in this case, I want to do like a short introduction to Solidity again. Like what is actually Solidity? Solidity is just like a language made for blockchain. It's written in C++ and you can access all the internal states of the blockchain itself. There are other languages depending on the blockchain you are working on. So for example, if you are working on Solana, you are using Rust. There are another language also called Fiverr, which is like very close to Python. And there are more languages, but the most common one is Solidity, just because like Ethereum use it and it's the first blockchain. And that's all. I mean, the first 
public and easy uh, easily accessible blockchain. Okay, so in this case, what we do, we go to contracts. So contracts basically just hold all your solidity. Contracts itself. So suppose we go to the contracts. Okay. Uh, give me a moment. Where's my mouse? Okay. And then, uh, oh, actually, I already have, but never mind. Let's make a new one. Okay. So, the very basic of the solidity contract is that you just make pragma solidity uh, and then the version. Oops. Okay. So the syntax is very, very similar to the C compiler and header. So, what this means, right? You are trying to get the solidity compiler version 0.8.2 until 0.9. You can specify the blockchain version, sorry, the solidity compiler version for your contract itself. And then, because remember that solidity is an OOP language, right? It is an object oriented language, meaning everything that lives on your blockchain, right, lives as an object, like as a contract. Contract by itself is an object. So what do you do? Of course, you make contract, and then you call the name of the contract. And then, yeah. So this is just like one object of a contract called storage. Okay, so what do we want to do with this contract? We want this contract to store a number and return a number. Very basic. And then later, you can do your own stuff. Okay. So, in the contract, what can you like define? You can have defined a character, you can define a string, you can define an integer. Yeah. How do you define an integer? You define unsigned integer to five, six number. So, what this means, right, is number is an unsigned integer of two, five, six bits, which is 64 bytes. You need to be very specific of how many bits because like solidity is like quite a low level language yep after this yeah just make a function so again this is the function definition and there are some stuff that you need i need to explain okay Okay, so we have defined one function. So what does this function actually do? Yeah, you guys can just go along with me uh, while I'm explaining. So this function definition is very similar to your, yeah, I guess it's quite similar to JavaScript, but not really, but okay. Uh, it's called a store. It's your function, the name of store, and one parameter, which is a num of type unsigned integer to five, six. And then the function public, this is a function modifier, which I will explain later. And then the number, which is the number here, is like your OOP like field, you know, like an object has a field, has a state, and then you are changing the state. And this is a contract to change something. So what is a function modifier? Again, solidity is an OOP language, right? So you want to be like a function to be public, meaning everyone can access it. And then you can even, inherit a contract meaning you can make a contract inherit another contract like oop so you inherit all the functions so you make the functions in that instead of public you make it internal and then you can even make it private private meaning only this function can access this function it's like an internal function okay there's like some other function modifier for this Ooh. 
Okay. And then the second one is this. All right. So basically, this actually just a setter and getter, even though I just rename it to store and retrieve. The second one is called retrieve. What retrieve does is basically like it accepts no parameter. It can be accessed by everyone. Few meaning you won't, by contract, by the agreement of your function call, you won't change the number. And there is a difference between like a few function and a this function. With, I will explain again later. And then it returns an integer of unsigned 256 of a number. And that's all. That's your first contract, basically. This contract can store a number and then can, can return you the number itself. And tada. Yes, you are done. So this is like the, the very basic, like the most basic of a, like a contract. Okay, so is everyone okay? Okay, are you guys still following? Okay, I hope you guys are okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, if you are not working, please uh, work with your friend, look at your left, your right. Ask like if your laptop is working, can I borrow your laptop, please? <laughs> but anyway, this is the language, and it's quite similar to like C, right? OOP, you just need to define your flow, and then you have the state. Okay, so here's the interesting part. Uh, I don't want to use the, oh, the new one. Okay, so after you already defined, right, you go to your root space, where you have all these folders, what do you do? You do a brownie compile. So what does compile actually do? Solidity, again, is written in C++, and C++ is a compiled language. So Solidity must be compiled to a bytecode also. And that's what you do. It will call the Solidity compiler and compile your Solidity code. So after you compile the Solidity code, you can see in the some folder called build.contracts and there are like some of the object files. Okay. So here are the amazing thing. You can go to brownie.console again. And now you can see, oops. Yes. Oh. Okay, basically you can see that your contract just now will be a variable in your Brownie interface. And a contract, there are some concepts again, which I will explain after this. So, a contract has like multiple stuff. But some of the most important one is basically an ABI. This is like uh, the one that will be fed into the blockchain. Uh, how do I? Okay. So this ABI basically defines you the interface. This is the interface or the contract that the, you can access as a machine and as a user. So for example, the first one. The first one basically just defines you a function that takes in nothing and return you an integer. So basically this, uh, ABI is basically an application binary interface. So if you play with your REST interface with your computer, right? So there's something called API. But API is of higher level than ABI. ABI is like something in JSON or XML or something that can be consumed by your computer, right? By your machine to understand what is the contract doing? Like what is the interface that the contract has? This is basically the ABI. And this is quite important because like in the second part, we can see later. Okay. So what do you do? You just deploy. Uh, okay. But I choose the account first. Uh, I, have, I have 10 accounts. I'll just choose the account zero. I am supposed to have like tons of balance. Okay. 
So, okay, just some concept again. I'm, I think just like convoluted. So an account, right? Basically, it's an MPP or let, let's say you yourself living in a blockchain. But you yourself living in a blockchain, right? Whenever you want to deploy a code or making a transaction in a blockchain, you must pay for something. Just imagine that you're using has a balance, like how much balance you have. Basically this like uh, divided by 10 power of 18, like how many ethers you have, the token itself. So each account has a token. The token gives you like the credit, how can you like do transaction, how can you deploy, how like you can send the token to each other. It's basically money living in the blockchain. Because they define their own definition of money, that's why like people call it, keep calling it tokenomics. It's an economy living in the blockchain by itself. Token is money. So another thing about token, right? It's also like used by some of the verifier to run your code. So we can see later, like why do we need a balance again? Like what can see just like set a finite balance? Okay, so this is the balance. And in this case, actually, I have Yes, I have 1,000 ethers, which is like quite expensive. 1,000 times 2,000 USD. It's around there, but okay, no, this is just like a fake blockchain living in my local host, JK. Okay, so you can play around for a while, like for example, like what does like the blockchain has, and then like, let's say in the chain, basically, Again, right? Blockchain is actually the database, but why it's called a blockchain? Because like, let's say I have like a block like this. This like at time t0, this at time t1, this at time t2. Each of these like represent a blockchain, right? Like a chain. But there is nothing stopping you from one person like changing this to like another state called t3. And this is what we call by block tree. So the thing about blockchain, what it wants to solve, right? How do we, how can we make sure that every like changes done by a lot of people, right? Ultimately like converge to one. Like how do we ensure that out of this tree, only one is correct and the rest is discarded and that's blockchain. So let's say by consensus algorithm, we, we choose this one and we discard this two. So this one become the source of truth and we call this blockchain. The rest is just like some discarded stuff. And you need to mine again. And yeah. So that's why it's called blockchain. And of course, in your chain, there are multiple blockchains, right? You have Ethereum, your Solana, each of them has a chain ID. And what is the height? Basically, like this is height zero, height one, height two, and you keep building the blockchains. And that's the height. And then you can play with more stuff, but uh yeah, I guess. I see what can I, yeah, I guess it's the block number, like, because there's like nothing in the blockchain, it's like an empty blockchain, the block number is zero. And then you can play around and then you can get the, um, let's say uh, we get the gas price, like how much is it to like to transact one transaction is around that one, uh, it's quite small. And then you can have, yeah, anyway, we can have a lot of stuff. Lah. You can play around with the blockchain, you can play around with the contract for a while. Yeah, it's up to you guys, but I'll show you how to deploy the block, the your contract into your own blockchain first, currently in your computer. So we already make the storage, right? And then we have make the account. So what we need to do, very simple, is like we make a deploy contract, storage, deploy and then the input is always in the form of json somehow but okay uh, and then i make this i think okay 
So actually, I already deploy the contract. So what does transaction mean, right? The easiest way to think of transaction is that this is a uh, the messages that you need to pass from one state to another. Because blockchain is basically like a chain of the states, right? It's like a state machine like going from one state from time zero to T1. So how do you change from time zero to T1? You send a transaction. your contract a lot of ways to make a transaction but transaction by its essence it just means it's the change in the blockchain state how do you change the state in a blockchain you use a transaction and yes so this one there's like uh, how many gas and where is the new contract deployed at this is the address of the new contract which we can see later okay so because we already sent a transaction, right? So our block increases to one. Just now it's zero. We sent a transaction and now it become one. So this is a new block. And that's the very basic of it. And then at the at your deploy contract, what you can do, you can see the balance. It must be like around zero. Right? Your new contract, like nobody sending money to it. Obviously, it has like zero balance. If it has like some balance, I think it's something weird. Maybe like some people just like accidentally send like money to your address. Some people actually can do that. It's like you can send money to your neighbor without your neighbor knowing it, right? Like why not? No harm in doing this. So. Okay. Okay, so. Okay, so now we can play around with the function that we already like defined the contract, right? Just now your contract, what it can do, it can do as a storage. It can store a number, it can retrieve a number. So your contract, if I retrieve it, there is nothing. It's zero. Well, I mean, I haven't changed the thing, right? But I can also store one. And what happened is that you send a transaction. Why is it sending a transaction? Because your contract state, right, is changing from state zero to state one. Your object living in the blockchain is changing its field value. So you need to change the database. How do you change it? You send a transaction. But when you only look at it, you are not changing the database. So you only read, you're not changing, you write into it, you're changing the database. That's why you need to send a transaction again. And now the blocks go to block number two. Yep. So you can see again, if you play again, and then you get the retrieve number, now the number is one. And then if you get the block, I think mm, web three, ETH block number, yeah, it's supposed to be two now. So there are two blocks. We can see the web three three H. Is this transaction? Oh shit. <laughs> but mm, is it in chain? Oh, I don't have the ID. Oh well, I lost my transactions because I forgot to save it. Okay, but anyway, there are like multiple transactions already happening, and then you can see that the chain is already like changing. 
and that's the very very basics of like doing blockchain yep and i think that's uh okay. hmm? sorry Okay, so you Okay, guys, do you have any questions? Any questions, guys? Okay, because, like, if not, I think you guys can make your own contract and just say, you know, the mandatory when you first learn the new language. Yeah, just make your hello world contract. So basically, just like make a blockchain contract, a contract, just like a function called grid, and just like say hello world, and that's all. And try to deploy it on your own blockchain. Yeah. Maybe we can do until like uh, 8 15 or 8 20. Hello, hello. No, yeah, sorry, no, 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 that's the I don't have a slide. But okay, should I just like open and edit later? Yeah, you can edit. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. 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 Okay, I can see the the link. Oh, okay. the Okay. string in. So let me be string. Is it star charm? No, it's just string. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I see. <laughs> 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 
I have to type. I can have my Hello, hello. Um, we prepared some pastries for you guys, but the turnout is much more than we expected. So maybe everyone, you can just take one, and then hopefully there's enough for everyone going on. Uh, before you all take, we only need to sign for attendance. So I'll send you all the link. Uh, give me a minute. Uh, okay. Wait, can I have your telegram? Wait, can I open? Yeah, open yeah, yeah, just open. So on uh, flash on the screen. Okay. Well, this one. Uh, oh my. Okay. Yeah, I mean, we, we can. We have the access to the thing. Is there a way to like hyperlink in Notion? Like, how do you hyperlink in Notion? Like, we create. We, we don't. Uh, you should just like create a bookmark. Oh, damn. Okay, then. Yeah, then because they have the access to the Notion page, right? Let's okay. go to the thing. Okay. Um. So, do you want to refresh it, or is just auto? Yeah, yeah. Can I show it? On... <laughs> Okay, great. Um, oh, it's too different. Like, two, yeah, it's fine. Uh, by the way, guys, uh, there's an attendance URL at the end of the Notion page. Please click on it. Yeah, click, click, and like, and subscribe. Yes. So the thing uh what is right because like when you do a transaction, some people must verify that their transaction is correct. In the sense that if I change one to two, everyone must agree it's one to two, so they must replay the transaction. In terms like, uh, let's say I have n before going into the big operation, then actually the the big become too much. Uh, uh, yeah. So the problem is like, what happens if some people just do a while? They never exit the function. Yeah, that's the problem, right? So you must put a limit such that like the contract will eventually stop. Yes, so you are yes. So usually, if you don't have enough, you have to put more gas. Yeah. You, play yeah. you can modify the transaction. Yes, it's your token. <laughs> In your blockchain, I think your Ethereum, like, you know, yes, it's your Ether. So like the most uh, yeah. most of the popular software stuff is there. Yeah, I realized I should have deleted the emails for the blockchain. So yeah, but it's just a uh, compatibility oh, layer for software on Linux. On Linux, sorry. Another block. Yeah. The same thing. Oh, okay. Thank <laughs> you. 
we deployed the storage contract. Yes, I I I I I I I I I I I I I I then there can be multiple chains temporarily. Then if I'm on your phone, I'm going to choose the one chain. That's what we call the chain. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I can't delete the Gmail ID, so like I don't want the Gmail ID to be there. So. Wait, what? No, because I, I, I need it. Like, I, I need the uh, Gmail. Uh, I can't delete it. Like, what? Why do you need to delete this? Because uh, you're not supposed to use Gmail. You're only supposed to use this. Oh. Unless you say the external attendees. Yeah, all oh, external. <laughs> sure. Uh, whatever, man. Like, as long as the number is okay, it's good. Cool. Yeah, I mean, the most, the most NUS IDs, that's fine. No, I'll just re enable it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, sorry, uh, not any before. Yeah, this is a mistake. Wait, what? Be like 110 though. <laughs> like, huh? We have 110. Like, cause, uh, you, you counted. No, there are 130 people in the room, right? Okay. If they all click, it will be like 110. Because I think some of them are duplicated. They already entered this. Okay, okay. I think we can try. Hi, hi. Can we get you guys to look at this attendance URL again? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You just have to click. Like, it will just auto mark your attendance. Like, it's that simple. Yeah, yeah. Thanks for helping. Okay, guys. Uh, also, by the way, right, if you have finished your task for the hello greeting, right, can you make your own MetaMask account? Because after this, we are going to deploy into real blockchain, like legit real blockchain, the people that can see. Yeah. Which one? Sorry? I think the MetaMask. Oh, no. What? Actually, maybe you have to block it. Yeah. Actually, maybe, yeah. Yeah. Shit, yeah, it's blocked, it's blocked. <laughs> okay, I never know about this. <laughs> Uh, okay, guys. Uh, sorry, guys. So, uh, if you want to download your MetaMask, right? I think you need to use your own mobile network. The thing is, and you just block the MetaMask. Apparently, you cannot open the MetaMask network here. The website is blocked. Yeah, I do it's okay. I think you can just go to my extension. Oh. Uh, otherwise, guys, I think you guys can go to MetaMask extension and directly install the extension. You don't need to go to the website.
Okay, okay. Is everyone okay? Yes. 
Okay, so uh, we still have a lot to do, so let's continue, guys. Okay, so um, you guys already like, let's say, deploy your first contract to your own local blockchain, right? But we want to do more. Like, how do we like even deploy this to a real blockchains? What I mean by real blockchain is that. What the? Yeah. Okay, then give me a moment. It's blocked. Okay. Okay. So basically, in real life, right, people have like uh, this canonical blockchains. Basically, the blockchain that people already agree on, and there are like multiple blockchains of it. And you can play again in the explorer. So basically, we have this one thing called polygon scan. So this thing is called a polygon chain. So yeah, just the name of the blockchain is called Polygon, and we have a core Polygon scan, and you can see all the transactions, all the database, all the block being mined by real people and real life, and this real coin, they work real money. So yes. So we have this all the blocks, all the transactions, and like what's the number, and then like, what's the price now? So let's say like this thing, one matic worth like one dollar. Yeah, around there. So now we want to deploy into this real blockchain so people can see and can use our own contracts. So how do we do it? So if you have your own MetaMask, you can go to this faucet. Okay, you might think this faucet looks like a, a bit shady, but no, it's not shady. This, this website is official website. What is a faucet, right? Faucet basically just like a website that give you a small amount of token like let's say 100 token for you to play around so what do you do here you just like paste your own address if you have your own metamask so let's say my address is it's this thing this like long very very long address this is my public address so if i submit and you choose, uh, by the way, you should choose like the Mumbai. These four are like four different blockchains. So please uh, choose the correct blockchain. So you go to the submit and then you confirm. And yeah. 
Hey. Yeah. So now I have uh, a bit of Matic token. Not bad. And this is like legit Matic token, like T uh, Matic just means like fast Matic. Yeah. So it's like around worth like 20 cents, which is not that bad, I guess. It, it still worth some money. <laughs> but all right. <laughs> yeah. But that's the idea. So you want to get real money to so you can deploy to a real blockchain. And this website gives you like the free real money. Okay. So again, in this case. We want to connect to the real blockchain, right? So to connect to the real blockchain, we must connect to a computer that runs the real blockchain. So how can we like supposed to do this? There are two ways. Either you are run like, you are running the real blockchain on yourself. Basically, the the code for the blockchain is open source. You can run it on your like computer and just leave it for one month. It will eventually like complete the blockchain. Or another way, you go to like another company. So there are some companies, let's say it's called Anchor. Basically, they are running the computer, like running some blockchain, and you can just like, let's say SSH into those computers. And of course you need to pay them. So if it's centralized, uh, I don't think it's centralized, like it's centralized, of course. Yeah, it's not decentralized, but I mean, it works. Uh, so you can just go to the website and then like go make some API key, go to the computer. Another thing that I like, maybe like uh, Infura. Uh, this one also like infrastructure company so they run the blockchain on their computers and you can just ssh into the computers and of course you need to pay but okay so basically i have this uh, api key that I already like create for this project you guys can just like copy it and just like use it for your own purposes okay so what are you supposed to do? You just export all the key here like this. So in this case, what I did, right? I exporting the Web3 Infura project with this like private token. You can just use mine because like Brownie implicitly, right? Can work with Web3 Infura. They already have like a framework for Infura. So you just need to export the token and they can already run it. And what can you do here? You can see Brownie Networks this. And yes, you can see like the, all the change, all the possibility that Brownie like support. There is Ethereum, there's Arbitrum, Avalanche, Aurora. Again, this Binance, the one that like got a problem right now. Harmony is for like for games. And just now the one we use, Polygon. And tons of like other chains that you can use. There are multiple chains that like Brownie even support for you guys. You can even add your on your own. Okay, so if we already like export our own key, right? How do we connect to the real blockchain? Very easy. So we just do networks. Oh, sorry, console. Yeah, just add the network. The network is called Polygon Test. Polygon Test is for the developer. And now you can see the real life blockchains there's no accounts because obviously you haven't deployed any accounts you don't have any toy balance you can see the number of the chain now block number there are like almost uh 30 million blocks in this blockchains and then you can see the chain and then you can see the id id like eighty thousand. you can play around like what's the base fee around 16 Matic, which is quite cheap, I guess. Yeah. And you can play with a lot of stuff. Yep.
So I already like add a account actually, but you can make your own account using Brownie account, please. And then you can see like what are the possible accounts in your Brownie frameworks. If there is none, you can add Brownie accounts new. Yes, just make a new, new some new something. They will ask you like, what's your private key? What's your public key? Just enter there. Okay. So I'll just show you. Basically, I already have like an account there, right? I have an account. This is my real account. Basically, if you go to Polygon test, you can do like play around with the playground, which is quite fun actually. Yes, so I already have my account. This is my address. And I have a balance, I think. Yeah, I have a few balance. Uh, no, no, this balance is actually, you need to divide by normalize. Okay, so why you cannot store like fraction there? Because again, blockchain like only support integer. Fraction or maybe like floating point arithmetic, right? It's very expensive in blockchain. So what do they do? They just multiply by a lot of stuff. Yeah, so I have like zero point four matrix, and then uh, what else? Let's see. Uh, yeah, not my private key. That's expensive. What else? Uh, can see. Uh, maybe nonce. I already sent to transaction before using this thing. And yeah, basically there's like a lot of stuff that you can play around. And this is my real account. So, okay, so let's say I already set my real account to account and I want to deploy the storage again. So basically what do I do? Just like deploy contract storage as before deploy. Account. And yeah, as you can see, right, this takes quite long. Why it takes quite long? Because it needs to synchronize with everyone, like in the node. Because this transaction is being published to everyone in the world. So basically, I'm sending a transaction. So you can see this storage is deployed as something, right? As some addresses. So what we can do with these addresses, this is a real address, by the way. I just copy, I go to the polygon scan. And yes. Okay, yeah, this is the right one. So basically, this is my contract that I just created like one minute ago. And you guys can see in the public blockchain, everyone can see it, that this is the contract that I just created. And you guys can play with this contract. And yeah, that's the basic of the blockchain. So everyone can see it. It's a database. I send a transaction and I pay for it. So if you see, I think my balance should be decreasing a bit. Yeah, it's very, very little. Uh, it's negligible. So don't worry too much. Yeah, 0 0.002. Yeah. But anyway, I already deployed this contract and you can play around. Yep. So you can see again, if I do the deploy contract and I call retrieve right, there should be zero. It should be nothing in the your own contract right now. But if I do like store one, right? So let's say I want to store some numbers. Uh, maybe like uh one two three. Again, it's very very long because it's waiting for the transaction to be published to everyone, and I need to pay again. Uh, yeah, just waiting for confirmation. And okay, so it's fine. You can see again here. Uh, 
Okay, yeah, finally. Okay, so 11 seconds ago, I changed the transaction state. So basically, I sent a transaction to this contract to change the state of the variable. So if you see, retrieve. Yep, so now my number is one, two, three. And you can check in my thing, there are two transactions. You can build it up from the state machine. Yep, so you can see the others, there are some events, the contract. Uh, again, this is the bytecode given by your compiler from Solidity compiler. And then you can even like verify that you are the creator by like giving some like the ABI and stuff. And yeah, so that's all. Everyone can see my contract. Yeah. So now, okay, if you guys are free, then please deploy your own Hello World contract also. Just play around and deploy to the Polygon test Mumbai. Yes. Hmm? Oh, okay. Okay, sure. Okay, guys, if you are still listening and following, right, please deploy your contract. I <laughs> <laughs> I'm <laughs> 
Uh, okay guys so actually that's all for the blockchain today there's like one last part is he's like playing with the python and interacting with the blockchain but you can just read it on your own it's like very little but yeah so that's all for the blockchain and i hope this basic is like quite fun and you can play on your own thank you thank you yeah Huh? I don't have the money. <laughs> you sponsor me, right? And your hackers should sponsor me one tip for this. <laughs> yeah. uh, thanks for coming for thanks for coming for hackers too today. Uh, we have Friday hacks this Friday. Um, and then next week hackers too is gonna be very interesting. We're gonna be talking about uh, designing your own cosplay items, and then like how to print that cosplay item. So if you guys are interested, you can wait.